God, grant me the acceptance, the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. I bet you've heard that prayer before. It's known as the serenity prayer, and it was made really popular by 12-step programs beginning as far back as 1941. It actually was written by an American theologian. His name is Reinhold Niebuhr. And we believe from everything I've read online that it was written about 1933. His version was slightly different, um, but it's basically the same idea in these three couplets, or these three verses that weave together. So today we're beginning a new series. It's Prayers of Perseverance. Seem like a time for perseverance. I don't know about you, but we are enduring through this global pandemic and everything else that is going on in our world. So prayer is a wonderful way to support us through. And when we pray together as a community, the same prayer as you might have attuned to when we pray the prayer of protection or we sing the peace song, it's so known in our community that you can feel the energy that has been put into it for so many years. So similarly, each of these weeks, the next four Sundays, we're going to have a prayer that we all work with uh, throughout the week. And this week is the serenity prayer, of course. Prayer is an intention setter. And so when we intend something, when we set our intention, it's like we, we carve out a pathway for ourselves and we align ourselves with the divine and the trajectory of that energy that we have just claimed. Uh, that what we are saying, it is that we want to draw to ourselves serenity, courage, wisdom in this case. This last week, I was uh, backpacking in Yosemite, which was just a beautiful privilege, of course, to be in this wonderful playground that we have about three hours from us, and in that, just steeped in that beauty. And so before I went, I set an intention, as I always do before I do something like that, and my intention was to just be in the divine essence, in the divine essence within myself, actually happened to be my uh, white stone this year too was essence. And then also to clear my mind. So those two pieces, which seem very much connected to me. And it was amazing what manifested. So my niece and I, Nicole, were on this backpack for three nights and everything seemed to come to us just when we needed it most. So for example, we had been walking a long way the first day, or what felt like a long way to us. It's all relative to whoever's uh, carrying a pack and backpacking, but uh, the pack was feeling heavy. The day was feeling, starting to feel long, even though it was amazing. And there was a little anxiety because we weren't quite sure where the next water source was and how much further we were gonna need to walk uh, that day in order to camp, uh, ideally near some water. Our maps weren't super good that first day. So uh, we hadn't seen a soul either the whole time. We even got out the compass <laughs> along the way to make sure we were going in the right direction. Uh, but all of a sudden, I think when we needed it most, we needed a little lift, along comes this couple nearly bouncing down the trail with exuberance. And they just share openly with us how they just had a swim at Lake McGee about two and a half miles down the trail. And it was such a relief to know about this beautiful lake. And then we started talking about how we wanted to camp. And, uh, and the man was telling us, yeah, go to this part. There's some really nice flat spots and it'll be wonderful. Oh, and by the way, about a mile down uh, before you, you know, get to this lake, you're going to come to a beautiful overlook. Well, I don't know about you, but if you've been sometimes on some kind of journey and you get a little carrot, it's really helpful. <laughs> And it was just so reassuring. It felt like divine intervention at just the right time. And of course, instead of stopping at the really stagnant small pool of water that we saw along the way that we actually considered filtering, and I kind of worried about mosquitoes or whatever else might have been in that water, we could bypass that and go to this beautiful vast mountain lake and camp right there. And even when we got there, it was like everything was set for us, like the table had been set. Somebody had obviously camped there. And if you ever backpack or even camp, 
you know, having a level place for your cook stove is really helpful. And so somebody had set up this beautiful rock, like a little table. It was like we had kitchen countertops. We had a nice log to sit on and a place to put our tent to look at the water. So it was like, thank you, God. The next day, we had another experience like this. Nicole's knee started hurting her. And so when we got back to the camp, I pulled out the, the ACE bandage that we had in our, our first aid kit. And um, neither of us really knew how, to, how it would be best to wrap it, but she wrapped her whole knee and had it you know, s sitting still. And along comes this young man, obviously interested in her, but too shy to talk to her, so he was talking to me, who he presum presumed was her mother, by the way. <laughs> anyway, so he's, he's chatting with us. He, he found an excuse to come over about three times. And about that third time was the charm when he's, he happened to uh, say that he was a physical therapist. And he had an idea of what was going on with her knee, and he showed her how to wrap it better, and he showed her some exercises, we also happened to be camping right next to an ice cold waterfall so she could kind of ice it very naturally, do the exercises, wrap it properly, and we were ready to go. And she had no pain after that. That is divine intervention. It's those moments when we are in the flow and the right thing comes at the right time. And what does it take for us in our attitude is an attitude of trust, which is what the serenity prayer invites us into. And a, a, a believing, an ability to have that kind of serenity that accepts, that allows. Sometimes we can't make change. We're going to be pushing up river for that particular thing that it is that's on our mind or heart. And so it's a willingness and openness to accept, to allow. So acceptance brings serenity. And of course, we can summon the courage to make change. Another key essential to happiness and fulfillment that this prayer offers us. And finally, it offers us this promise. Like if we walk through life with these two things in our hands, this acceptance and the sense of action. And over time, we learn the wisdom that says when to accept and when to act. Uh, upon what to act and, uh, and for what shall we accept. And that takes that honing of wisdom over time. So if we just keep at it, we keep at the prayer, we keep asking, we keep offering, giving over to the universe, bring me the wisdom to know the difference between the two. So what I'd like to do today is just unpack these three aspects of this prayer that are so key. And, and to walk through each of the phases. Accepting things as they can is where we start. And boy, I don't know about you, but this is probably the most difficult one for me, especially when I feel really strongly that something needs to be changed, that something could be better. And it's that sense of knowing, maybe for some of us, it's, it's that sense of, of um, we want to achieve and yet it might feel like underachieving or just settling or, you know, just kind of giving up in a way if we don't take action. Yet having that wisdom to know that sometimes the action is not the right time or even the right act. And if we let it sit, if we accept what is as it is in the moment, whatever it is that we are being guided to accept, whatever wisdom we're procuring to know that this is a moment, this is a thing that we just need to accept right now. And to allow ourselves to feel the serenity in that. God's got it, basically. If we can know that, if we can give it over, let go, let God, that's the key to this one. As a friend of mine, Craig, used to say, you know, we often pray for for guidance, but what we're really begging for or expecting or asking is for revelation. But, you know, the divine is more intelligent than that. And so instead, what we get is just the peace that we need to see right now, which is what helps us then accept what is right now. It doesn't mean it's forever. It's just in this moment. That's not where our attention and energy and action needs to be placed. So it's, it's a a hard one, maybe, realization. It's working for the long run instead of the short term. 
It's relaxing into that long-term seeing that there is a greater power at work. There is a divine order unfolding and a divine timing, a time for everything, as Ecclesiastes tells us about every season, a time, a time for every season, a time for, for, um, for, for trusting, essentially, that rhythm. Beauty is another great way that we bring forth serenity into our lives, that we bathe ourselves in a kind of serenity. And I certainly have been steeped in that in Yosemite. So I wanted to share just a little piece of that with you with this small video that I took of a waterfall that we were uh, hiking there and camping nearby. So maybe you could have felt just a moment of the kind of peace that comes with the, the sound of the wind and the sound of the water and that kind of beauty all around. So what is your beautiful place? Because we tend to carry these things with us once we've experienced them. We, we always have that image or that memory to go back to and, to and to allow ourselves even maybe looking at a picture or just closing our eyes and going to that place to feel the serenity that comes. I actually invite you to do that with me for a moment. Close your eyes and go to that happy place, one of those places that just brings you a sense of deep serenity. And take a few moments just to breathe into that space, to open your senses to it. At any time, we can go back there. At any time, mostly what we are doing is experiencing the feeling, right? The serenity that comes with the beauty and the peace. And of course, even if an image isn't present for you, there is always that presence and power inside of us that we can drop into and just take a few breaths. So if any point during your day or your week that you just need a moment, even if you don't want to speak the whole serenity prayer, you can just take a moment to breathe maybe three times and allow yourself to be in the, in the, steeped in this idea of serenity. And when we, you know, it's interesting when we go to these places, it might seem paradoxical, but it actually, it's, it's like opens up the way for us to be more effective so, because it is when we relax and sort of loosen up our minds, we get a new perspective. And when we open up and have a new perspective, spirit has a little more room to, to move through us, to bring forth whatever it is that we need to see or to know or to experience. So that we're in that dance when we're willing to relax a little bit more and open our view we actually accomplish more, and we get in that place of divine right action. It sets us up for action that is really much more focused and much more effective. So with serene acceptance, that hard driving energy is left behind, and the floodgates of divine flow can move through us. The French painter Demure often was criticized by his contemporaries because he had so much talent and he did these really, he confined himself to this really simple work that would sell. And so they were always edging him to, to use his talent more fully, to do something more original. He had this sort of pot boiler approach. And he said, well, one has to be of one's times. And his colleagues said, but what if one's times are wrong? It takes courage, you know, to step up and to do something that is original. It takes courage to buck the mainstream, if you will, the status quo. Isn't it wonderful, though, that we are living in times 
where our mainstream and our status quo is nothing but ho-hum. <laughs> to live in one's times right now really is to be on the edge in some ways. It's to be creative and collaborative and there's lots of rich opportunity for us now. There's not to say that the opportunity wasn't always there, but this collision, if you will, of events that is available to us in our society has, has brought forth something in us. It is awakening something in us. And these are times of awakening. These are times of creativity. These are times to open ourselves in new ways and allow that authenticity to come forth. So we can be very much of our times and be creating something really rich and wonderful and meaningful and, and new that will help emerge a, a whole new way of being, I think, for our society, uh, for our lives and world. So if anything is off in the world, if anything feels off in, in your life, you know, we can, we can change or, or correct that ourselves by just inquiring within. You know, it, it might feel like some of those things, I just don't have the power to affect change there, or it feels too big, or it feels too overwhelming. But instead, if we, instead of giving up, we can just ask ourselves, well, what is in my power to change? Usually it's us, right? Usually there's something within us that we can have the power, of course, to affect change. But there's also, by doing so, some effect around us and in the world. So at being in that inquiry can be really helpful to move us into this courage, to do what is in front of us to do, because God places that, the divine places that in our path, because it is ours to look at, ours to consider, ours perhaps to do, to pick up that ball and to carry it out into the world in some way. And to consider taking action toward bettering something maybe that keeps us up at night. I remember Marianne Williamson saying that so many years ago. I was in my early 20s listening to her give a lecture in Chicago. And she talked about whatever it is that gets you down, whatever it is that depresses you, that's giving you, that's spirit giving you the nudge that that's an area to go into, to move into, to make a difference and to take action. So it's, it's that courage that is summoned by this prayer to allow us to follow through with whatever it is that's weighing on us. The beauty of this serenity prayer is that each verse sort of nestles into one another like a Russian doll. You can kind of unpack each one, whether you put wisdom in the small doll in the middle or the outer doll and go from within out or, or either way. Each way, it has a, a sense of holism to it with each of these aspects. And so simple, really, with even a little humor at the end about the wisdom to know the difference. So it has that uplift at the end with a little bit of humor. So it's really just a perfect little prayer in many ways. And I appreciate, actually, I'm going to shout out to Love Eternal. This prayer sort of had wafted through my mind as one to start with. And then when we were speaking, uh, Jared was telling me about how important this prayer was to him. I hadn't even mentioned it. So again, divine intervention. I was like, oh, okay, I think that's a message to unpack this particular prayer to begin our series. So, so that, that serene acceptance, you know, it, it nestles into courage. It allows us to stay balanced, you know, when we are in that place of, of acceptance and serenity so that when we are acting in, in courageous ways, when we are acting in ways that may be challenging for us, we have that to fall back on. We've already passed through that kind of sense of serenity so we can pull it forth, just like we did with the visualization a few moments ago. We can drop into it and go, oh, okay, there it is. There's the piece. I can move forward now knowing and trusting that, that it, everything's going to be okay. So God grant me the courage to, to, the courage to change the things I can. And let's take a step in that direction now, one step in that direction, and, and allow Love Eternal to take us there with this song. This song is called One Step and has a little story behind it. Uh, many years ago when the kids were little, we were uh, running a band in a community and I was feeling just one of those times of juggling, yeah, <laughs> juggling, really stressed out. 
um, we were getting ready for a show and our babysitter had canceled and it was just this, you know, one of those moments in my life where I just felt like everything was crumbling. Um, and I got this clear message that to focus on my intention. What was my intention for what I was trying to do? And the idea was to bless and to be blessed. That, that's what we're doing with our music. We're trying to, to bless others with the music. We're trying to be blessed in return. With the children, I'm trying to bless them and be blessed in return. Mm -hmm. And the words say, uh, one step in front of the next. My only intent is to bless and be blessed. If I bring that pure intent, God will bring the rest. Mm -hmm. And I really started noticing, so it was even a while where we would start a set with this song, um, really setting our intention for what it is that we're trying to do and knowing that if we walk with that pure intention and we focus on that, that God will bring the rest. And to me, that's such an important part of faith. Um, why are you trying to do the thing that you're trying to do? Because if you're in alignment with it, then God's in alignment with it. And it, you know, everything works together for good. Yeah, one step at a time. One step at a time. Yep, so this is a song for you called One Step. with that pure intent and let God work the miracles. Yeah, does every be time. Be blessed. Yes. Aloha. Aloha.
Oh, well, thanks to Love Eternal for reminding us that setting our intent and then letting go is the prayer process. So we pray for the serenity to accept the things that we cannot change, the courage to change the things we can, and in this last part, this last essential step, the wisdom to know the difference. Our ability to be effective with changes that we want to make relies on our relationship with spirit, our relationship with this internal guidance system. We might call it, in spiritual terms, GPS, standing for God's positioning system. So that positioning system puts us in the right place at the right time, and if we're tuned in, we'll know that, right? That we are in the right place at the right time, and we'll trust that the right actions will move through us. And, you know, I don't know about you, but sometimes I make a wrong turn, <laughs> and I get rerouted. You ever do that? <laughs> in the, the actual car with the global positioning system, the GPS that system. But it's the same, isn't it, in our spiritual walk, in our lives. Sometimes we might make a wrong turn or a turn that wasn't necessarily in our fullest and highest alignment with the divine. But then guess what? The system just reroutes. And maybe, I always think sometimes if it happens in the car that maybe we were rerouted around an accident or something else. So maybe that rerouting was exactly the path we were supposed to take. Again, it comes down to this sense of trust. So do you know how to use that GPS, that internal GPS system for yourself? It's important to keep honing and practicing how we tune into that and utilize it for our best and highest good. For me, I, I really, you know, tune into my body and, and mostly around the solar plexus area. I can feel a sense of like, ah, or awe, ah, or openness. And, and that, it feels to me like, yes, go forward. <laughs> or a tightness that might, constriction that might be fear and it might be no. So you got to kind of explore there and see. For you, there might be a, a slightly different way or maybe a completely different way that you tune into your own guidance system. Whatever it is, I encourage you to practice. You know, practice on mundane things like throughout your day, just seeing, oh, is that, what do I want to eat? Instead of looking in the refrigerator and standing there, you know, ask your body, tune in. What does my body want right now? What would be the most, you know, best fuel for me right now? What would taste really good to me right now? You know, those kinds of, that, that trusting of, you know, holding, holding something and asking your body, for example. Those kinds of simple things. I mean, we eat three times a day, so why not use that as one of our, our ways of, of tuning into our, our guidance system? But whatever it is that you do to hone it, just keep practicing, keep practicing. Uh, an old uh, Unity, he's not old, but <laughs> uh, way back when I took some Unity courses at Unity of Chicago, um, this teacher talked about how his guidance system worked like a traffic light. And he would get a red light for stop, <laughs> a green light for go, obviously, but a yellow light for slow. So that slow brings us back into that serenity and acceptance to allow ourselves to move in divine timing, in divine order. It's all part of this package of gaining greater wisdom. And there's wisdom that calls us, it seems like at all times, the divine wisdom within us is always speaking to us in some way, nudging us in some way, calling to us in some way. The, the, the thing is, we're not always listening, right? So it's about being in that dance together, of, in that conversation together, of listening and then following. According to Proverbs, wisdom, who has this, this voice of the feminine, is, is always calling. In Proverbs 1, it reads like this, Wisdom cries out in the street, in the squares. She raises her voice. At the busiest corners, she cries out. At the entrance of the city gates, she speaks. Give heed to my reproof, she says. I will pour out my thoughts to you. I will make my words known to you. Those who listen to me will be secure and will live at ease. Sounds like a lovely promise of wisdom, of answering the call 
of wisdom. So let's heed that call. Let's listen. Let's live that, li- that life of ease that is promised to us. We know that when we accept, at least for now, whatever it is that we need to accept, and, and, and then we know when to enact change as we work the aspects of this prayer, trusting that knowing, relaxing into that knowing, allowing ourselves to move is a triple gift of serenity, of courage, and of wisdom. You know, so long ago, at the very beginning of Unity, Charles and Myrtle Fillmore, our co-founders, began a whole community of people in a very similar way to today. Now, we have different technology, of course, so you can see me on camera. They didn't have, or they weren't utilizing that in that way at the time. But what they were doing was broadcasting a message to their greater community all across the United States, and eventually it would course expanded beyond the United States, to come together and pray together in one consciousness, to pray the same prayers at the same time. I want to encourage us to practice that, especially during this week of World Day of Prayer, to begin to pray together the same prayer at the same time. I'm going to choose noon because we already have a noon meditation and you can actually come on the Zoom call with us and participate in that way. And we'll speak the serenity prayer together every day this week and then next week's prayer uh, throughout. And um, if you can't come on to the Zoom call or you wish to do it otherwise, just join with us in consciousness like the old days in unity, how this movement was built and pray the serenity prayer at noon every day. Let's see what God's got in store for us. So as we close out, let's begin by saying the prayer together. Let's know this in our hearts and in our minds as one community. I can almost hear you in this room speaking it together. Together. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. The courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. And so it is. Bless you.